Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to 18 things you need to know about The Walking Dead Onslaught. Number 1. The Walking Dead Onslaught is a first person virtual reality game that focuses on both melee and ranged combat against undead enemies. So do not expect to be able to play this game without a virtual reality headset. Number 2. The game is going to release on PlayStation VR oculus rift and steam vr simultaneously as of yet there's no news of an oculus quest version but perhaps it might be a bit too intensive for that platform to handle number three as of recording this video onslaught is set to release on the 29th of september that's only about a month away from now but it is still possible that it could be delayed so please do not get mad at me in the comments if that happens number four the game is being advertised as being 25 euro and dollars on Steam right now with a 10% discount if you pre-purchase there. So you can probably expect that to be the price across all platforms. Pre-ordering the game nets you a couple of character skins and gold weapon variants. As of right now, the game isn't available to pre-order yet on PlayStation Network. Number five, there is a deluxe edition also available at $5 more that includes extra weapons made famous by The Walking Dead TV show such as Negan's famous Lucille baseball bat. Number 6. The Walking Dead Onslaught will need the move controllers to be playable as its combat systems are built around real motion. So do not expect DualShock 4 support and do not expect aim controller support either. This game seems built around needing two tracked hands so that means move controllers just like Saints and Sinners. Number 7. Onslaught is being developed by Servios, a studio well known in the virtual reality space for creating several well-regarded virtual reality games, including Raw Data and Sprint Vector. Their name behind this project should inspire at least some level of confidence. Number 8. When Onslaught was initially revealed, Servios had planned on including a co-op mode. However, this had to be cut during development so that the studio could focus on the single player story and making that as good as it can be. It remains to be seen if the co-op mode will ever resurface in the future as some kind of updates or DLC. Number 9. Unlike this year's The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, Onslaught will be based directly on The Walking Dead TV show rather than the graphic novels. As such, it takes a more realistic style approach versus the cartoonish look of Saints and Sinners and the Telltale Walking Dead series. Number 10 players will take control of Daryl Dixon for the main campaign as he tells his story to a stranger he meets. Several actors from the show will return to voice their characters in this game, including Norman Reedus for his character, Daryl. Number 11. The story will take place between the 8th and 9th season of the television show and Servios were able to work with the risers from the TV show to make sure it fits in smoothly with continuity. Number 12. The story will see Daryl and Rick at odds with one another as Daryl's story focuses on him trying to save someone whilst Rick is more concerned with rebuilding their society. Expect the two to butt heads throughout the campaign. Number 13. Outside of the main campaign there will be another mode called scavenger mode. Now this mode has been described by Servios as being infinitely replayable and in this mode players can control not just Daryl but also iconic The Walking Dead characters Rick, Michonne and Carol as they go out on supply runs for their home Alexandria. Number 14. The game will feature an arsenal of 24 weapons. Each will be customizable to suit the player's preference and playstyle. Number 15. Players will spend time upgrading the settlement of Alexandria made famous in the show with players deciding what parts to upgrade with their limited resources. Upgrades to Alexandria will offer benefits to the player. Players will also need to make trade-offs between the good of the player and the good of the community when making these decisions. An example given to Screen Rant was the option to buff the player's combat abilities or upgrade a building to provide food for the settlers. Number 16. Servios developed what they call a progressive dismemberment system that will allow players to engage in visceral real motion combat. This will include de-limbing, which is a word I did not know existed, carving and impaling amongst other contextual interactions. Servios have also developed what they call the melee restraint system which sounds very similar to what we saw in Saints and Sinners, essentially allowing players to grab an enemy, push them, and throw them away. Number 17. 
while other video games based on the TV show version of The Walking Dead have not fared very well, Servios have spent over two years working on this adaptation to make it solid, and they've had access to some of the same resources that the TV show has, according to Screen Rant. And finally, number 18, COVID-19 did slow the production of Onslaught down a little bit, but Servios were able to adjust to the new working from home style to get the game ready on time. And there you have it, 18 things you need to know about The Walking Dead Onslaught. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about this upcoming title and I hope you learned something from watching this video. Before I go, let me give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen right now. Thanks to their support, this channel can stay moist. In particular, let me shout out the top tier Patreon supporters, Crum, Pete Hawkins, Chop 517 Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid and Tradition. Thank you very much for that incredibly moist generosity. If you would like to help support this channel, you too can go over to patreon.com forward slash petrifying pumpkins, the link of which will be in the description below. But if you don't want to do that, I'll be happy with the likes, comments, and all that usual shite too. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me always use his tracks in my videos. You can find him in the description below at decepticon.com and you can also find him on all the usual music places like Spotify, Bandcamp, all that kind of stuff. That is it for this video, lads and ladies, I will see you in the next one. Stay moist.